moving on monitoring the communications what happens here this process actually you know it makes sure as we learnt it in the introduction the optimal flow of information what is monitoring is it's just making sure that you are maintaining optimal flow of the information this is important because you know we understand the level of in, impact of a miscommunication i think in the beginning i told you for example if some wrong information is sent out to somebody who is not supposed to get it how can that affect the overall project can be understood during this monitoring so the level of impact of a miscommunication right so on a casual note you send a project status to a very high level person of a customer so it could impact greatly you know we might have already planned some corrective actions but in the message that is already being sent that correction part might not have been included but the message is already sent okay that there is a very huge problem here so what happens and how do we deal it so all these things happen and we can control better if we have some monitoring process so and yes this is also performed throughout the project not just one point in time because the information is flowing continuously let's have a quick look at the outputs the work performance information of course it is updated with the communication plan versus status you know how it is being added to and all the change requests are updated you know any activity which was performed to you know eliminate or relax the bottlenecks so that comes under change request so that is important that we update it the project management plan is updated again the communication management plan you know the stakeholder engagement plan you know typically these things get updated also the project documents same the same typical list like issue log lessons learned register stakeholder register i keep repeating it repeating it just keep these things in the back of your mind let's see what inputs we need the project management plan is referred of course again if we talk about the specifics within the project management plan we can make use of the resource management plan the stakeholder management plan and again don't limit these things to just the options that i have given but other components can also be used the project documents like issue log the project communications the lessons learned register so i think now you might have understood why i'm trying to skip it these are the same processes or same activities that are repeated in almost all the communications you can also see that there is there is enterprise environmental factor and organization process as such these are by default available in almost all the processes so we need not explain it again and again and again i think the work performance data i think this is related to the communication plan that uh, you know that we can refer to all right let's move to the tools and techniques the expert judgment someone who is aware of the cultural awareness for example or uh, when we are speaking with international delegates the international communication guidelines there might be some when we are speaking to a government official especially so such guidelines expert all of them are consulted the pmis is an important tool all the multiple communication channels you know they can come handy we touched a bit upon the data representation also you know like the stakeholder engagement matrix and all and uh, the interpersonal and team skills come handy and the meetings are also quite effective communication tools so with that said we are finishing this knowledge management area i think we can move to the next topic the project risk management but the term risk is this is usually considered as a quite negative word so but we must realize that risks could also be positive ones i know i might bit a sound philosophical here uh, you know saying risks are positive and all but as the pimbo guide itself says the business of the organization always have a few risks the risks here means you know, something which we anticipate to happen so anticipation could be for a positive thing or also for a negative thing so the pmi says the opportunities which we look up to the opportunities which we anticipate to come in the near future they are also considered as risks but but the positive ones and of course the results that are harming the growth of the organization or the project if they are forming blocks to the project flow they are considered as negative risks of course so there are both types of risks one the one the positive and second the negative so the negative risks they are again further categorized uh, as two parts first thing is the business risks which are creating troubles in the regular operations of the project and second is a dangerous one that is a pure risk pure risk is referring to the you know actual physical harm to the individual who is working on the job like an accident in the work area an injury happened during the work somebody might lose a limb it might even be a death risk so all these type of risks are considered as pure risks it's a part of negative risks so anything that we are unsure about but we still move ahead with a bit of preparation to face this uncertainty you know that is called the risk 
So basically what we do in a project, in every single new project, uh, we start with something by anticipating a positive result. At the end of the project, at the end of our very hard endeavor, we will end up with a positive result. So which means we are handling the risk by doing a project. Things could also go wrong, but we hope and anticipate for a better result. So bottom line, all the projects that we are doing, in a way, they are risks. So does Pimbo Guide talk more about these risks? Yes. It talks about two levels of risks. So first level is at the objective level. Second level is at the overall project level. If we talk a little bit about objective level, the, the Pimbo Guide has named it as individual risk. So this is nothing but a risk at the object level. It means that one of the objectives of the project is going to get affected by this potential risk. That's it. It could be positive or it could be negative both. But the effect is going to be only at a, that particular object level, not at a full complete project level. So similarly, the second level is at the overall project level. This is the risk that if you do anything in any one of the objective or any one of the process, it could affect the overall project. So basically, we all, all that we do is just the activity is not the complete project at once. So any such activity which might affect hugely or largely for the complete project, that is considered as the second level of risk. That is the overall project level risk. Few new concepts are also being looked up to. For example, variability risk. This is nothing but it's like we don't know whether the supply could meet the demand in the future or not. So let's take the example of the sunflower oil that happened recently. Due to the war in Ukraine, Many people were afraid that sunflower oil might not be available. So they have you know, raised the prices. So be it internal factors or external factors, this is a variability that is becoming more and more popular. Another trend could be the ambiguity. So the ambiguity risk, this is nothing but the product is not certain to solve the problem. Right? So we create a product, we create a new product targeting that we are going to solve the problem when it you know, comes to shape. So what could be the example? For example, let's take, you know, every now and then a new onion chopper comes out. So none of these designs have been proven to be the best. So, I mean, at least for me, your experience might be different. Any onion cutter you take, we have a lot of problems associated with it. Like we have to face a lot of problems while cleaning it. You know, we still have to peel the onions. There is no machine that could, you know, easily cut the onions for us and give. So none of the designs it could be you know best or foolproof design so that is the ambiguity so these are the two emerging trends if we talk about uh, agile methods the sprints that we discussed agile agile means many iterative processes right so in these iterations that are happening the sprints as they call it they are also started to include the risks within that sprint so uh, before i complete the sprint what are the risks that i might have for the objectives that i'm handling for the tasks that I'm handling, right? So every iteration has risks associated with it. So this is also becoming a, a new trend. So let's see what the processes we get to learn. Project risk management. As you can see, we have seven different processes to learn in this knowledge area. Let's quickly hover one by one. The plan risk management. This is similar to all other plans. So here we define how to handle the risks. And uh, secondly, the identification of risks. We learn how to identify you know, each and every risk here. The qualitative analysis, this deals with uh, prioritizing the risks, right? So there are so many risks and then which is more impactful, right? So we add a quality to it, whether it is the topmost priority right now or the second priority because it doesn't harm us so much. You know, such quality is analyzed or associated with the risk. Quantitative, uh, it's about you know combining the individual effects of the project. There are so many small, small risks associated with many objectives. And then we club or combine all these small risks to form a you know, bigger summary of the risk estimate. So that is the quantitative analysis. Planning the responses, it's about creating a few strategies and uh, identifying the solutions to the problem. And implementing the same, uh, whatever the plan that we have done here, this talks about implementing these plans. So and the monitoring, it deals with tracking of you know, the anticipated risks and whatever solutions that we have given here. We have given responses here and then here we are tracking whether those responses are effective or not. Shall we quickly jump to the processes? 